A chi-square goodness of fit test is a type of test where you want to see if your data fits a certain distribution. This is different from a normal chi-square test where the other one tests for whether your two data sets are dependent or independent of each other. So the chi-square goodness of fit test, because you're testing whether it fits a distribution, the way you do it will be slightly different for every type of distribution you're going to look into. So for this video, I'm going to look at an example where I want to see if my data fits a uniform distribution. Now the process and the definitions will be similar with other distributions like normal distribution, binomial and so on. But um, there are slight differences with how you calculate the um, expected values. So that will be the major difference. But if you understand the basics, um, then the rest will follow. So the null hypothesis for this type of chi-square test is that you want to see if your data satisfied a, satisfies a certain distribution. So your null hypothesis is going to be um, that the data satisfies a uniform distribution and so the alternative is that it does not satisfy a uniform distribution. Just read the question carefully, whatever the question tells you, that's what you're going to say. The contingency table will always be given. So this is the um, contingency table, the observed table. For this one, we don't have to do anything yet. Um, so we just leave that as it is. Um, so then we have the expected frequency. So this is my observed table, but I want to do my expected frequency. Now this will depend on the type of distribution. For this example, so for a binomial distribution, what you're going to do is take the sum of the frequency, so the sum of the frequency that you have, and then divide by n, where n refers to how many categories you have. In this case, I have seven categories here. So for the uniform distribution, I'll have this and then 15, which means that my table is going to now be, so my expected frequency table is going to be, like let's say this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it's just going to be 15 for all, because that's what a uniform distribution means. A uniform distribution is that everything is uniform, everything is exactly equal. So um, this is what it is. Um, so you're going to, it makes sense. But for the other distributions, you will get different values for each one. As for the degrees of freedom, it's n minus 1, so the number of categories minus 1, so that's 7 minus 1, which is 6. So the degree, the way you calculate the degree of freedom is also different from the normal chi-square test. So just be careful with this. So usually you'll just have one set of categories. Now before I move on, I just want to go through the different types of uh, probability calculations. So um, depending on the model you have, you'll calculate the probability differently. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to, once you find the probability, you multiply it by the sum of the frequency, except for um, binomial, sorry, except for uniform. So for the uniform distribution, you're just going to use this as it is. As for the rest, to calculate the expected value, you have to multiply this, so for the expected, you're going to have to multiply this probability by the frequency of your data, and again here by the frequency, and here by the frequency. And the frequency will be given. So usually, like for example, for a normal and binomial distribution, they'll tell you, oh, we, we did this data for 200 uh, people or 120 people. So the numbers will be given at the beginning of the question usually. So this is the frequency you use. And But for uniform distribution, you take the sum of the frequency divided by n, and that will be the answer for every single um, data that you have for every single table. Uh, for normal distribution, you're going to use CDF, and the mean and standard deviation should be given, um, and you have your lower upper bounds from the table. For binomial, you're going to use binomial CDF. The trials and probability is fixed, so that's something that doesn't change, but the x value will depend on the table that you have. So now that we have the expected value and our observed and our observed value, what we're going to do is calculate our um, goodness of fit uh, value for the chi-square. So in your GDC, make sure you enter your observed and expected in separate lists. And then you're going to click on stat and then go to tests. And then you're going to go all the way down where it says chi-square goodness of fit test. Be careful that you don't pick the chi-square test accidentally. Once you're there, you're going to put your observed, your expected, and then you're going to write your degree of freedom. So you're going to manually write six. 
So put your list in there, make sure they're in the correct order, and then click on Calculate. And it's going to give you your chi-square value, your p-value, and obviously the degree of freedom is given there. So we're going to take these values and do a comparison. So the comparison will be similar to the usual chi-square. So you're going to compare your chi-square value with a critical value. If it's less, you accept the null hypothesis. If it's more, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. And as for the significant level, if it's more, you accept the, if it's more than the significant level, you accept the null hypothesis. If it's less, you reject the null hypothesis. So the critical value and significance levels will be given in the question. So for our question, it's 12.592 for the critical value. And the chi-square value we got is 1.6, which means that we accept the null hypothesis. But let's double check again using the significance level and p-value. So our p-value is 0.953, which is more than the significant level of 0.05. So in conclusion, we can say that the data does follow a... So in conclusion, we can say that data... So in conclusion, we can say that we accept the null hypothesis and the data does satisfy a uniform distribution. So hopefully this was clear. Usually it's much easier to do once you've mastered the chi-square testing. Um, but the tricky part is knowing which distribution you have to do and just knowing how to calculate the probabilities for those.